Welcome to an introduction to chemistry brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, look us up on Facebook or visit parkbenchtutors.com. This is our third part in our chemistry work on mole concepts. And let's deal with calculations in this podcast as we have been in the previous two. We have to calculate the density in grams per litre of chlorine at SDP and we're given that the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.45. Well, since chlorine as a gas is Cl2, you're going to get two atoms in a molecule of chlorine, so there will be 70.90 grams of chlorine at SDP contained in 22.4 litres. So to get the density, I simply divide the 70.9 grams by the 22.4 litres to give me an answer of 3.16 grams per litre. OK, let's look at some mass volume problems. How many litres of oxygen would we get at STP from 42.6 grams of sodium chlorate? Well, what do we need to know first of all? Well, we need to know first of all what the equation is for the reaction so that we can determine something about the amounts. And the equation is 2NaClO3 gives 2NaCl plus 3O2. So there's our starting point. Now, what are the quantities that we know? In fact, there's only one quantity that we know at the moment, and that's that we've got 42.6 grams of sodium chlorate. So what's our next step? Well, the unknown that we're looking for is the number of litres of oxygen. OK, so let's look at the problem in a little more detail now. So if we have two lots of sodium chlorate giving two lots of sodium chloride plus three lots of oxygen, right, 213 grams of sodium chlorate would give 67.2 litres of oxygen. OK, where have I got these from? Because I didn't pick them out of a hat. So, how did I get them? Well, the molar mass of sodium chlorate is 160 0.5 and there are two lots so twice the molar mass is 213 grams so that explains where I got my 213 grams of sodium chlorate from now what about my 67.2 liters of oxygen oh well, we know that the volume occupied by one molar mass for oxygen gas is 22.4 liters and I've got three lots of oxygen gas so three lots of 22.4 gives 67.2 litres. OK, we're almost at the end of this problem now, so let's look at it in terms of proportion. We know that we are dealing with 42.6 grams of sodium chlorate and we know that we will get x grams of oxygen, or x litres of oxygen. And we know that if I use 213 grams of sodium chlorate, then I'll get 67.2 litres of oxygen. So 42.6 over 213 is equal to x over 67.2. So all I've got to do now is solve for x. 42.6 times 67.2 divided by 213, which will give us 13.4 litres. OK, let's look at another problem. If we heat calcium carbonate, then we get carbon dioxide. And if we add hydrochloric acid, we get carbon dioxide. But how much would we need if we added hydrochloric acid to calcium carbonate? How much calcium carbonate would we need to get 44.8 litres of carbon dioxide? OK, here's our equation. Calcium carbonate plus two lots of hydrochloric acid gives CaCl2 plus H2O plus CO2. So that's our starting step then. We write out the equation. Now we need to write in the known quantity and the quantity that's unknown. The known quantity is the 44.8 litres of carbon dioxide that we want. And the unknown quantity is the x grams of calcium carbonate. OK, now the amount to make 22.4 litres well from the equation there 100 grams of calcium carbonate that's its molecular mass gives 22.4 litres of carbon dioxide right I got the 100 then from adding the atomic masses for calcium carbonate calcium's 40 carbon's 12 
there are three lots of oxygen at 16 so 40 plus 12 plus 48 that's 100 so finally that's my equation and I now know that x grams over 100 will be equal to 44.8 divided by 22.4 I can solve for x so x is 100 times 44.8 divided by 22.4 which is 200 grams okay we heat potassium chlorate we'll get off oxygen so if we've got 50 grams of potassium chlorate how much oxygen do we get as a mass start again write out the equation 2kClO3 gives 2kCl plus 3O2 now we write in our quantity that we know and the quantity required the quantity we know is 50 grams of potassium chlorate that we've got quantity required is the three lots of oxygen now we know that from atomic masses 245 grams of potassium chlorate would give us 96 grams of oxygen right so where do we get those numbers from for potassium chlorate we add up the atomic masses for oxygen we take the atomic masses so we can write these figures into the equation now and we're now ready to set up our proportions so we can solve for x 50 over 245 is equal to x over 96 so x is 50 times 96 divided by 245 which will be 19.6 grams of oxygen to three significant figures now why have I only used three significant figures well because 50.0 this was there was the original amount and that's three significant figures what mass of potassium hydroxide is needed to neutralize 80 grams of sulfuric acid start by writing the equation two lots of potassium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid gives potassium sulfate plus two lots of water enter the known quantity enter the quantity to be determined right the 80 grams of sulfuric acid is the amount that we know the mass of potassium hydroxide KOH is X that's the amount we're seeking so here's our equation we enter the masses using the atomic mass figures so that I know that 112 grams of potassium hydroxide would give a react with 98 grams of sulfuric acid and of course I've got 80 grams of sulfuric acid and I want to know what X is so to solve for X X over 112 is equal to 80 over 98 and that makes X equal to 91.4 grams you can also do problems known of using volumes by making use of Gay-Lussac's law which states that when gases combine they combine in whole number ratios so what volume of ammonia is going to be produced if you have 22.4 liters of nitrogen combining with hydrogen we start by writing out the equation N2 plus 3H2 gives 2NH3 so we fill in the quantity and the quantity to be determined we have 22.4 liters of nitrogen and the quantity to be determined is the X liters of ammonia so I apply Gay-Lussac's law I know that one liter of nitrogen gives two liters of ammonia or one volume of nitrogen gives two volumes of ammonia so 22.4 over 1 gives x over 2 solve for x and we get 44.8 liters and what volume of sulfur dioxide produced from burning sulfur in 8 liters of oxygen assume that all the oxygen gas is used right so what volume of sulfur dioxide do we get write out the equation S plus O2 gives SO2 enter the known and the unknown quantities the known quantity is the 8 liters for oxygen the unknown quantity is the x liters of sulfur dioxide now we know from Gay-Lussac's law that one volume of oxygen gives one volume of sulfur dioxide so 8 over 1 gives x over 1 solve for x and x is equal to 8 liters 
Right, here's another problem that you might come across, how much is left over. So we have a reaction, zinc plus hydrochloric acid gives zinc chloride plus hydrogen. So suppose we've got, to start with, 65 grams of zinc and 65 grams of hydrochloric acid. We act these together and we want to know how much hydrogen is produced and how much would be left over and of course it's which reagent would be left over as well. Are we going to have the zinc left over or are we going to have the hydrochloric acid left over? So let's fill in our masses, right? So we put in the molecular masses for zinc and hydrochloric acid. 65 grams of zinc reacts with two lots of hydrochloric acid, which is, means that that's 65 grams. And of course we've got our X of hydrogen. Now we know that 65 grams of zinc would normally react with 75 grams of hydrochloric acid to give 2 grams of hydrogen. So, let's start first of all by determining which is our reactant that's going to be left over. If 65 grams of zinc normally requires 73 grams of hydrochloric acid, but we've only got 65 grams of hydrochloric acid, then we're going to have some zinc left over. Some of the zinc's not going to be used. That's the first bit done. So the hydrochloric acid's the limiting factor. Now all we need to know is how much hydrogen is produced. So we know that we've got 65 over 73 equals x over 2, right? Solve for x and I'm going to get 1.78 or 1.8 so finally how much is actually left over we started with 65 grams of zinc and 65 grams of hydrochloric acid and we wanted to know how much zinc would have actually been used so y over 65 is equal to 65 over 73. Solve for y and y is equal to 58. So that's the amount of zinc that I use. So I take my 58 from my 65 and that tells me I'm going to have 7 grams of zinc that's going to be left over. That's the end of our work or further work on calculations brought to you by Parkbench Tutors narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about us, contact farkinstitutors.com or look us up on Facebook. Thank you.